Ya. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, as you can see, the topic will be data consistency in entity framework core. So when I started to think about this topic to myself, not to do the presentation, but just how to to work with entity framework core, uh, what happens uh, with SQL scripts, with database, with uh, uh, data consistency. Um, a lot of questions appeared in my mind. I started to investigate in that. And later on, I decided uh, to share my uh, uh, small findings with uh, other developers. Uh, so most, uh, uh, not most, but like some of questions that I would like to highlight, which we are going to answer in this presentation uh, will be like, First one, of course, we will cover theory part about data consistency in SQL transactions. So be ready that we will spend some time to go through SQL, through databases, SQL profiler, etc., and see how it works and uh, how transaction is committed, rolled back, and etc. So, if someone is aware uh, about that, sorry, that will be the revision for you probably. For some, that uh, information will be new or just interesting to revise. Then we'll switch to EF Core, and to, we will be investigating how Entity Framework Core convert the code, actually C sharp code, into SQL queries and transactions. We will investigate that in several, several uh, ways. We'll use Visual Studio profiling feature for database uh, uh, EF Core. Uh, logs and SQL profiler will be combine all of that information that we get from those resources to understand what is going on there. Uh, also, the question will be what actually happens when we use this guy save changes in code, like uh, what happens, uh, what is a SQL, uh, uh, how that is combined with uh, SQL transactions, how they are rolled back, how data is stored, how uh, uh, DB context, if uh, core DB context understands uh, what should be done here, if you like did a lot of changes with entities previously. And uh, last question we would like to answer actually, when we should use explicit transactions in entity framework core, because we can use just save changes without creating transactions in code. And we can uh, use C sharp code to create those trans transactions. What are use cases for that? We will try to answer here. Okay. First part is a SQL theory part. Uh, Let's just revisit what we have learned in university on just in internet, what we know about transaction. So transaction, as we know, is a single unit of work. Uh, we can combine several statements uh, in begin, trans then uh, first use begin transaction, combine several statements, then commit or roll back transactions and that meet whether all changes we did in that transactions, transaction uh, will be applied to database or we will roll back everything. So it looks like uh, more or less clear uh, what it means. Uh, if you have any questions anytime, interrupt me. I'm totally fine with that. Okay, if we go to the properties of database transactions, we know those four, uh, mm, for four properties, uh, atomic, that means all or nothing. As I said, whether we commit everything or whether we roll back everything. It, we can do partial work like 10 statements in one transaction, first five updates are applied and last five updates are not. That is mm, mm, violating, uh, atomic, so transaction should be atomic and all of those statements should be hmm, whether applied or not. Uh, consistent transaction. Uh, this is about data consistency and uh, there are actually uh, 
some type of SQL constraints, which we know like uh, not null, unique, some column, we can apply this constraint for some column like name should be unique and uh, transaction allows us to follow uh, this property consistent. For example, when we run uh, three uh, statements in a row, first one update name, second one update name, and third one updates name and violates uniqueness, then all transaction should be rolled back. Isolation. Isolation is about uh, um, session uh, sessions which work with same data on the same time. So isolation is about uh, uh, making sure that sessions don't affect each other. Isolation levels will be out of scope for this call, but we will touch a little bit some just details about that, at least what is a default isolation level and etc. And durable, durable, what does it mean? It means that once we save the data in database, it will remain in this state and it is permanent. So yeah, if, if from my point of view, A and D, mm, more or less simple to understand uh, and uh, uh, they are implemented by DB server provider out of the box. Uh, isolation I is out of scope for this call. We will be concentrating on consistency, just consist consistency uh, and uh, how to achieve that and how uh, EF core helps us with uh, that uh, guy. Actually, the topic of the presentation is just data consistency. Okay. Mm. And this is, a, uh, as we already uh, took a look, uh, the list of SQL constraints we'll use in this presentation just to, uh, for demo purpose, unique constraints, but uh, constraint, but uh, that will be later on in practice part. How we can violate uh, consistency, by the way, it could be data type, type mismatch, not just constraints violation, but and something else. Um, now, interesting uh, topic uh, about the mode in which we can start SQL transaction. There are actually three uh, most common uh, auto commit mode, explicit mode, and e implicit mode. There is also batch scope transactions, they are out of scope for this call. So, we will be concentrating on these three transaction mode uh, in this presentation. For example, if we take a look on uh, uh, the documentation, which uh, Microsoft provides us, they says uh, what is auto commit transaction. So auto commit transaction is when each individual statement is a transaction. If you take a look, for example, on some transaction, I will explain later on what are these transactions and what they do. Now just pay attention to, uh, let's say uh, this guy and the code I, SQL statements I selected. If I run them, uh, just I run selected SQL statements and I am in auto commit mode, that means that transaction will be implicitly started before this update and committed after this update. Then next transaction will be started before this update and committed after this update. That means we are in auto commit transaction mode. Each statement is wrapped with transaction. Now, if we go to the uh, next transaction mode, which uh, is called, by the way, regarding several more words about auto commit transaction mode. I have created a uh, mind map. For me, probably it will help for you to understand uh, the difference between transaction mode. If you take a look on this mind map, so we have acid, we have uh, four properties, atomic, consistent, isolation, and durable. We are talking about consistency now, and for example, constraints, so we can, follow consistency uh, somehow in SQL uh, and 
in EF core. If we are talking now about SQL, we have one, two, three uh, modes, and auto commit is a uh, default one by SQL. As I said, each statement is bounded by an unseen begin transaction and an unseen commit transaction statement. And uh, we set this transaction in SQL with uh, such, um, let's say, query uh, set implicit transaction off. That means that we turn off implicit transaction and auto commit transaction is uh, turned on. Uh, okay, now when we move to implicit, this guy implicit, what does that mean? Implicit transaction mode. A new transaction is implicitly started when a prior transaction completes, but each transaction is explicitly completed with commit or back. If you take a look on an example of implicit transaction, so we set implicit transaction to on, and we have two updates and just one rollback here. Uh, that means that transaction will be started here even when we don't use like uh, begin transaction, but we still should explicitly finish it by using rollback or commit or something else. This is implicit transaction mode. Guys, uh, is it clear for now uh, or any questions? No questions. I will, will take it as everything is fine and clear. Now we are moving to third one mode, which is called, I explained implicit and now is explicit mode. Explicit, as we can imagine from the name, we should use begin transaction and uh, finish transaction with rollback or commit. So this was the theory part for transaction modes. Uh, this is a slide just not to forget to share with you the diagram map. Uh, and now SQL practice part. Um, I have prepared some demo project. Uh, I will share GitHub link, presentation, my article on Medium, uh, where I described uh, actually the same what as I'm as a, uh, what as I'm talking about here about data consistency and entity framework core. So you will be able to find more details there. So this uh, demo project, what it actually does. So it create, um, we have DB context. I called it fission lock. This is for my pet project, <laughs> which I uh, used in a different project. But uh, yeah, we have fission lock. Uh, we have one table, account table here. Uh, we have seed data. We insert just uh, five values to the database. And if we run, run it now, mm, data was inserted. If we go to the database, let's say, let's call this guy, select everything from this table. You just have table with uh, five rows here. Okay, now let's run scripts. First one script is called auto commit transaction. Uh, this script uh, will demonstrate how transaction, we can run transaction in auto commit mode. Auto commit just to revise when each update is wrapped with begin transaction and uh, commit transaction. So we are setting implicit transaction to off. That means we are in auto commit mode and we run, we will run uh, this guy. What do you think will happen when I click F5 for these two updates with selected SQL code? So now the value uh, is here. We can see in the, what is database, let me run one more time. Yeah, this is the value. And now I'm going to run this guy. Uh, 
I guess only last um, update will be rollbacked. It means a first line, uh, first account with name one one uh, will not uh, will be uh, um, will be set in test one two three. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I, I guess second update uh, would be rollbacked because so it's another ex expression. We are taking picture of current snap data snapshot, selecting this guy, running it. So what happened? One row affected, first one. Second row affected. Then we are getting error. The rollback transaction request has no corresponding begin transaction. That means when we are in auto commit transaction, each statement is already wrapped with transaction and we cannot use any rollback, commit, etc. Auto commit means, means SQL handles that for us transaction. Now let's select what we have. We have this guy now. So first one was wrapped with transaction and committed. Second one, this guy was wrapped with transaction and committed. And after that commit, which happened here, we do not see it here. Uh, we do not see it on, on screen because that is was uh, done by uh, SQL. And when we call rollback, nothing happens. We just saw that error. So uh, first one and second one uh, was updated successfully. Now we move to second example. Here, uh, the script is called implicit transaction. That means that our session, session actually is what I'm selecting. If I selected this, uh, these several statements query and click F5, all of them are considered as session. And if it is implicit transaction, that it means SQL will run begin transaction for us. But in the end, we need to run uh, rollback or commit. Let's uh, uh, run data seed again to have uh, um, data snapshot which we need. So is, this is what we have now. Any suggestions what will happen after I run this session? Essentially, I guess we should roll back uh, both rows. Mm, I think you're right. Just let's let's check that image. What we have now running this guy. Everything was run successfully, and let's select values. So this is what we have, what we had, and this is what we have. Yeah. Everything was just rolled back, rolled back. Uh, and now last mode, which is called explicit. Uh, explicit mode means that we should run begin transaction and roll back or commit, not run, but write uh, explicitly. Even if I run this guy, it doesn't matter at all because begin transaction, when we write begin transaction, it overrides this. So uh, even if I select it, it will not impact the result first, this, this guy, because mm, I am starting transaction explicitly. So uh, I think the result is obvious there, but just to be consistent, let me, let me do this exercise again for this transaction. So we, have data snapshot now for this guy. I am selecting this. Again, I selected set implicit transaction to off, which applies, should apply as auto commit transaction. But as in this row, we begin transaction explicitly, it sets explicit transaction mode. Mm, I'm running my session. Everything was run when we compare what we had previously. And now 
the, the same. Okay, so there are three types of transaction mode. And now, which one do you think uh, EF core uses from this? Probably you um, had some issues and someone in investigated that when- I believe code... it should be third one with transactions. And actually in practice, um, I had some experience with working with SQL. Um, all change which is uh, applied with uh, uh, SQL directly, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Entity Framework uh, allow our allow us uh, to do it manually. I mean, make uh, SQL requests. Um, all such requests uh, can be. Um, completed with begin transaction. It means on one transaction. Uh, Am I right? Uh, uh, I don't want to say no, <laughs> whether you're mm -hmm. right or no. Okay. Uh, let's let's uh, wait for the answer. Uh, once we start to uh, see the code and examples with uh, Entity Framework Core. Mm. So that was uh, practice part for SQL. Now, EF core, a little bit of theory part. So based on official documentation, save changes applies as a transaction. Each save changes is a transaction. If you click on this link, I have saved. Uh, mm, by default, if the database provider supports transactions, all changes in a single call to save changes are applied in a transaction. So yeah, Roman, you, you're actually right. That will be the transaction. Default EF core transaction isolation level. This is out of scope for this uh, uh, conversation, but I just would like to mention it here. Is set to default value for the database server. So if SQL server, which I'm using now on my local host, uses read committed, which is the default one for SQL Server DB provider. So EF core will reuse that isolation level as well. Uh, a little bit of theory. Uh, it is, uh, mm, 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 so, but I will cover this in summary. So don't pay attention to this guy. Uh, how entity framework uh, tracks uh, what to save in save changes. For example, uh, if we take a look on, uh, one second, if we take a look on such code, so we have save changes here, we have DB context, we are updating uh, one entity here with ID one. Then uh, do you see the code or probably it makes, it makes sense to increase it. Then we update in second entity here, and then we call say changes. So how does entity framework core know at this moment, which entities to update? That is achieved via entity state for each entity. And this entity state just track all changes in memory before we call say changes. Uh, we will investigate it more in practical part for entity frame core. EF core runs SQL via this stored procedure. SP underscore execute SQL. This is, uh, I mean, run this save changes. When we call save changes and take a look on SQL, which is generated, all updates, not updates, but uh, create, update and delete operations are made via that stored procedure. This is extended stored procedure. Extended stored procedure means that uh, it is located in master DB, in master programmability extended stored procedures, system extended stored procedures, and we can't view what is inside that stored procedure. At least uh, I tried to find a way to do it, but I do not find it. Probably if someone knows it, please share it with me because it's interesting for me to see what is inside and how mm, the stored procedure runs. And each selects statement could be executed directly. 
So if you take a look on this code, this guy is a select and it is run right here. When we run this line 72, that means entity frame core will send select statement to the SQL uh, database. But this update and this update will be executed only when we call this save changes. Um, yeah, that was theory part. Now EF core practice. Uh, let's take a look on my first example. Yeah, uh, this is to clear table. This is for data seeding. Insert those five rows we already saw. First example. Mm. Sorry, can I interrupt you for yeah, just yeah. a few seconds? Mm -hmm. Interesting question just appeared in my uh, arise in my uh, mind. Can you scroll down a little bit? And in your example, when you uh, select uh, account, uh, we just had this example. Yeah, this one. And uh, it's regarding selecting an um, entity framework context. Interesting question. I don't remember it. A line number seventy-two. Yes, uh, you uh, make a select action. And then you uh, update this account uh, row with test one. And then uh, what happened if uh, on line 75, if you change um, uh, if you change request at the end instead of uh, two select uh, first uh, number? Yeah, this one. Uh, Yes, change uh, instead of two, uh, use one, uh, yeah. Yeah, I see what mm -hmm. you mean. And uh, your question is what will be actual SQL uh, uh, query, yeah? Interesting, the first question is what we um, get in um, line number 75. Uh, is it text uh, test one or previous? Uh, mm -hmm. Or previous info about this account? Mm -hmm. What do you uh, think? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so actually good question. Uh, I uh, was about to cover each example step by step, starting from the simplest and this oh, will sorry, be sorry. Yeah, a little okay. bit uh, later. But as you already asked, why not? We can think about that. If you ask me what, uh, what will happen, uh, whether we get test one or old value, to be honest, I don't know. I can debug and check what we, yeah, we can we can recheck it, but I believe yeah. it should be um, a new um, mm -hmm. test one uh, information mm -hmm. because uh, DB context uh, update already updated, but uh, on memory without even save change, we still have this DB context. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. If you uh, have time, it's not uh, so complicated. We can che check it. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Uh, if we use several DB contexts to access one database and we change this guy in one DB context, don't yes. call save changes and then mm -hmm. uh, trying to read that uh, entity from second DB context that obviously will get dirty yeah. read, let's say, yeah, not, yes. uh, not updated. Yeah, but in this case, as this is one, makes sense. And makes my, sense. my question Very was point. specifically for level isolation. And if mm -hmm. you have a uh, level isolation like read uh, committed, uh, mm -hmm. one committed, uh, it the, uh, it will impact on result with two database mm -hmm. uh, contexts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, valid point, valid point. Okay, okay, mm, what is about time? Yeah, looks like we are on track. So first example, single update with one save changes. We have DB context. We uh, uh, this is the method single update with one save changes. DB context. We are accessing some account by ID. Uh, then we update the name. Then we call save changes. Simple method, but I decided to use it uh, to start uh, investigating with this simple code what happens behind. The scene. So uh, let me move this guy. Uh, we will use uh, three debugging tools. First one will be uh, performance profiler um, database. When I click start, it means our application will be started and 
uh, we will run our uh, our method, uh, which is single, which is this code. So let me let me do this uh, database start. Uh, and just for your information, uh, um, let me put this guy here. Just for information, I enabled on my DB context uh, entity framework core uh, logs, log to console just right uh, line. So this will be second point of truth for us, the console uh, logs from entity framework core. And the third one will be uh, SQL profiler. Let's, let's start SQL server profiler. Um, localhost connect run uh, let me stop it for now clear and let me uh, rerun my application so we will have all those information in all three places debug performance profiler database start Okay, uh, this is what we have from Visual Studio. Uh, but again, the code, what we did. So we have, we have run clear table, which we are not interested in data seed. We are interested in only uh, on the code, SQL code starting from this guy. If you go back, uh, don't save. These are old reports. Just let me close them. Uh, if you go back to the uh, to this guy, we have uh, we see truncate table where I removed everything. Transaction committed. Uh, here's first select. So we see that uh, this guy accounts first was converted to some select statement, top one, ID one. Then we see transaction committed. And then we see this guy, update account, set name, parameters, and that's it. So we do see some uh, useful information here, but I would say that from my point of view, this is nothing to what we can get in EF core logs and SQL server profiler. So I demonstrated this just for information, like probably sometimes it can help when we can just should take a quick look to SQL queries which we sent. Especially it helps when we are connected to some remote SQL server, uh, develop or even QA or something like that. And we cannot uh, attach your SQL profiler to that uh, server but we always can run locally our application in this mode and see which SQL scripts we send to the SQL server. Now, if we go to the console and we will start, we need to find this, this guy that I used to simplify my life and just to find queries more easily. So after, after this, we are selecting uh, value. So what happens? Compile and query expression. This guy first uh, generated query execution expression. Then we see select statement. Then we create in DB command, create a DB command for execute reader, opening connection open it connection, executing this select. Uh, data reader was disposed, closing connection, closed connection. So right after this line of code, uh, in this line of code, we open it connection. We converted this to SQL, select statement. We have run the DB command uh, and closed connection. Then we move to the update here. Uh, this uh, guy, mm, you see that I have this console uh, three lines 
uh, written to console. And right after them, I see next three, this. So for this line of code, nothing happened at all. Entity Framework Core uh, did not open connection, did not communicate to DB, nothing happens. So that was just in memory update operation. And only after we called save changes, so uh, we, we start the magic, not we, but entity. Uh, framework core. So save changes starting for um, this context. Detect changes. This is a method called by entity framework core, which detects what was changed in memory. The unche uh, unchanged property account name was detected as change was detected as changed and will be marked as modified. An entity of type account tracked change state from unchanged to modified. Only when we call that here, say, when we call save changes here, uh, then detect changes compiles, opening connection, uh, beginning, uh, we see the code here, beginning transaction with isolation level unspecified, but beginning and begin transaction with isolation level read committed. Because we got that isolation level from DB provider and set it as isolation level for this, uh, Entity framework core uh, in memory stuff. Okay, we're creating DB command, uh, executing DB command as an update operation here. Uh, a data reader was disposed, disposed, and here's a magic committing transaction, committed transaction. So transaction was started and committed, closing connection, uh, disposing transaction. That's it. And now we see the latest, the last one, console, three line and console. Um, okay, and what we can see in 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 uh, SQL. Oh, I did not start it. Let me start it and re rerun the same operations. Bum. Let's go. So I can stop it now. As you can see, I care only about application name core Microsoft SQL, SQL client data provider, uh, starting from this and from this line and to this line. That was my session in console application. So what happened? Our read login, we see that uh, entity framework core uh, runs a lot of set parameters before working with a database, like uh, a lot of parameters, but we take care only about several of them. Uh, set transaction isolation level read committed as we discussed. And second guy, which we are interested in is this one. Set implicit transaction to off. Theoretically, set implicit transaction to off means that we are in out commit transaction mode. That's why I was confused when I started to investigate this topic. Uh, like I saw that we are setting auto commit transaction mode here. Uh, that means that each update statement should be wrapped with transaction, but in practice, uh, that is not the case because uh, DB context save changes applies and wraps all updates with transaction. So, um, so that means that this guy, even if we set it to off was overridden with entity framework core, like we saw in short example. Even when we set out, uh, when we set transaction mode to auto commit, but use begin transaction, uh, we are overriding auto commit what with uh, explicit mode. As we saw from EF core logs, 
that begin transaction was started and then committed, then mean, that means uh, actually we were in um, explicit transaction mode. Now, if we go uh, deeper and see turn, uh, that was truncate table, which I have run to clean uh, the tables, table, what else interesting here? Uh, no, not this one, not this one. So select statement was sent from our application just as a select statement. Uh, but, uh, mm, but when we are talking about the update, update was run with such SQL. We executed that uh, stored procedure, which I highlighted here. Yeah, of course, runs SQL, like create, update, delete operations with the stored procedure, which is called extended. So this is SP execute SQL stored procedure. We pass SQL uh, and parameters to this stored procedure. Uh, what is going on inside? It's really interesting for me to see, but I wasn't able to find uh, a way to see what is inside this stored procedure. It's not an easy task to modify or see the content of extended stored procedure. So yeah, here update happened. Um, I suppose more or less uh, clear for now uh, what is going on behind uh, the scene uh, with this single update with one save changes. Now let's see what is going on if we call next interesting method, which is called uh, this guy, several updates with one save change. Uh, I remember that some time ago when I started to use uh, Entity Framework Core, I even didn't know when we do this guy, whether it is saved to DB or not, uh, why not, <laughs> etc. And uh, now we can answer the question. We already covered this uh, during our call earlier uh, that this update will be done in memory. This update will be done in memory. Then we call save changes. We uh, let's let's run the application and investigate logs. What is there? Mm. One second. I I need to clean clean solution because I have run it until previous console was opened. So binaries were locked. Mm. Okay. Mm. We have run this code and now let's investigate. Uh, what we got. Uh, where is my uh, starting point? So here it is, several updates with one save changes. Okay. So we did first uh, select. As we know, select runs uh, out uh, on fly and we, we are opening connection uh, so here was select, uh, creating db command, opening connection, we have run that select, uh, uh, closed connection, then we did this update and um, we, uh, we will not see logs for that, uh, that was done just in memory, then one more select, again opening connection, sending select statement to the db, uh, closing connection, then we run save changes here, uh, detecting changes, uh, and uh, here's uh, an interesting thing that for account name we detecting several changes, account track change state uh, was detected as changed. 
uh, modified um, detect completed we open in connection uh, beginning transaction executing update uh, in executing update here's the thing individually as a number of batchable commands to smaller uh, so two updates um, will be common executing uh, executing and that's it disposed uh, what does that mean uh, like two updates if we go to the uh, profiler i stopped it again so let's clear it uh, run it mm, close previous session run it again this method and let's examine actual update scripts whether those were combined in single one or have run as a two separate so if you take a look on our core microsoft sql provider session here's the first update we are executing this store procedure uh, completed you see test one and here we executing for test two so we had if you take a look in code we had test one this two so these two updates were not combined in one single update but they have run as two updates two uh, we uh, we called this stored executed this stored procedure two times i think that will uh, as for me that was, was quite useful information because i didn't know that i thought that that is combined into a single single update <clears throat> Okay, mm. any questions for now? No questions, okay. Uh, now, mm, the method is called break constraint with one save changes. As the topic is data consistency, so it will be interesting mm, what happened. And by the way, I should mention that I added uh, one constraint for account name is unique so i have added the constraint that the name should be unique now in this update uh, i'm updating account with id1 setting name to test one and here i am breaking the constraint i am setting account with id2 to the same name what are your expectation what do you think will happen when we call save changes what we will see in database any suggestions no changes uh, no changes let's let's just check that um, so first thing i would like to do is 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 to um, set breakpoint here so data seed was done i'm selecting everything so this is current data snapshot we have let me make a picture of it uh, and now let me proceed i even would like to debug so selecting updating selecting updating you see if i click f10 now i move on so like in memory it was possible to update it but now when i apply changes and call save changes i click f f10 i'm getting exception uh, an error code while updating the entities in the inner exception uh, sql exception cannot insert duplicate key uh, it's obvious so we are violating constraint which we set i just click continue and uh, go to the database uh, call it the data again so this is what we had this is what we have no updates were applied uh, all changes were rolled back 
so yeah suggestion was correct uh, this guy was reverted as well uh, now if you move on to the next example mm, this guy explicit transaction with one save change so what we can do we can create transaction in c-sharp code with this stuff with the context database begin transaction set isolation level here uh, then do some updates and what we are doing here we are calling save changes and then we are calling commit for this transaction uh, let's see what will happen mm -hmm. Let me set the breakpoint here. Let's start running the application. Uh, okay, data seed was run. Let's let's get latest snapshot. This guy. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Begin transaction. I'm entering this code selecting and now i'm clicking f10 so save changes was run but now i'm going to check uh, entity framework core logs so starting from here begin transaction uh, with isolation level read uncommitted uh, select statement uh, we are creating db command executing db command uh, for select data reader was disposed now save changes starting we detecting changes uh, track it that the changes we just creating transaction save point here something new uh, create a transaction save point um, execute reader db command uh, it disposed track it so save changes completed but we did not see that transaction was committed so previously if we for example run this guy when save changes we run this line of code transaction was committed now when we use explicit transaction and run save changes nothing happened transaction still is not committed so in case we decide between line 104 line of five insert several more updates and add several more save changes all of that uh, still will not commit the transaction transaction will be committed should be committed only explicitly via this guy transaction commit so now if we go here and i click f10 here go uh, to the logs i see committing transaction committed transaction closing connection and connection was closed that's actually it and that is the difference uh, i'm stopping it and last example yeah save changes so explicit transaction select update save changes then again update save changes and only here commit as i already had a disclaimer in previous example uh, transaction will be committed only on this uh, this part like it probably sounds obvious for someone to be honest for me until i started to investigate all of that and change how it looks like i was in doubt what really happens here and here and how all of that works so let's just let's just run this guy uh, hmm. Let's set breakpoint here, F5. 
uh, by the way, uh, let me stop it. And I would also track DB changes itself uh, to show you what happens with data. So current snapshot. Uh, and now we run application. Uh, so after this save, first save changes, I click F10 and I'm trying to get this data again. Um, what do you think will happen now if I select this data? What will I see? Any suggestions? No changes. Um, let's select. The thing is I can't select because uh, the data is locked. Transaction still is in place and we can't access the data as isolation level is read and committed. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get the data at all. So we have to complete the transaction. Uh, we moving forward, doing this up, update, save changes. Just to double check, trying to access the data again, nothing happens. Then we commit transaction here, bam, go here and we got the data. So uh, what happened? What happened? And here's an interesting example. So you see that first we updated, this is actually the answer to previous question. So we updated account with ID one and set the name to test one. Now we are access, accessing same DB context, but searching for account with this name, this, this one, test one. So we really got this account and updated it named to test two. And if you check the DB, this guy first account was updated to test two. Actually, yeah, this is <laughs> the question we mm, discussed earlier. Yeah, and uh, that's it about simple examples and what is going on uh, under the hood. Uh, a little bit of summary. Mm, practice, so we covered this guy, covered this guy. A little bit of summary. Uh, point number one, uh, in most cases, there is no need for explicit EF core begin transaction. Uh, when it could help, uh, first one, of course, if you need to set different isolation level, which your SQL provider uh, has, uh, or when you want to combine several save changes as we did in uh, this example. Mm, but the need of doing uh, so is uh, the use case. The use case probably when you would like uh, to make sure the data is consistent and after you called save changes first time, uh, and later on, you're calling save changes second time. You, you don't want to store the data after this guy, because in case you violate data consistency here, you would like to roll back everything else that uh, was done previously. So this could be a use case, but in this case, I would actually ask why can't we use just single save changes in the end and don't use ex explicit uh, transaction. Uh, Sorry, can, can I interrupt you for yeah, just yeah, a sure. second? Here are interesting question. I remember uh, something similar, but um, for a little bit another uh, purpose. Um, is it possible use in the after this line uh, 119? Uh, add line with a constraint. Do you remember which we just used in previous example? And I believe in this case we got exception as well. It means update um, add constraint with name. You see? Uh, probably you mean that uh, we are setting uh, same name like we 
like do something like yes like yes if we already have uh, this constraint on database we can uh, set a new uh, item with uh, with name and um, uh, key point here that we can handle this um, handle exception before we commit changes like uh, this use case i mean we updating the name to add one then the same yes. name to add two and yes. what do you mean by handling uh... it means uh, on after line 124 mm -hmm. we will be able understand that uh, we already have a uh, constraint on our database and and depends on it um doing something else okay i mean uh, i mean you see before we commit yeah can you check uh, please yeah let's see let's see so mm -hmm. yeah mm, right now i'm clicking f10 mm -hmm. yeah yeah exception Do you I'm, see my point mm -hmm. i i just remember it uh, one time when i used uh, such case it, mm -hmm. it needs uh, it need to be implemented in case if we want, uh, for example, update multiple um, rows from different tables, which may be somehow uh, related. And in case if you uh, from line 117 mm -hmm. uh, cover by uh, try catch, uh, and um, in case, and just imagine that uh, in case of success, then you update another row you see but in case of unsuccess before you commit you can uh, for example change another uh, row yeah yeah i, I got what mm -hmm. you mean like these yeah. changes could be wrapped with try catch and we can we can handle those exception in in a catch we for example can set different name or something like that and just in finally yes. block let's say commit something like that before commit and uh, what is mm -hmm. more important uh, we can uh, and attach or uh, change status of our entity from modified uh, to uh, mm -hmm. initial state. Makes sense, makes mm -hmm. sense. But uh, all of such games will make code really tough to read and understand. It, 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 there could be use cases, but um, in most cases uh, that could lead to uh, like, overkill i would say so, yeah i agree mm -hmm. yeah yeah so my point in this summary note that was we shouldn't uh, uh, like play with it when we really don't need it and uh, in most cases just save changes without any explicit transaction in code will be enough so we should be really careful to use explicit transaction and start to play with all of that when we really need it uh, uh, yeah, second point uh, to remember that EF core runs select statements immediately. Uh, that means, for example, when we, in a runtime, we go from this line of code to this one. So 117 will send, will open connection and run select. But here, when we update, nothing happens. Uh, and that is just in memory uh, operation, but uh, the connection will be opened just here so if you take if we are talking about like CRUD operations, uh, this guy like R will be uh, run immediately, and everything else like C U D will be run uh, later on for save changes. When we call save changes, uh, yeah, this is the one second. Uh, um uh, this is what i just uh said uh save changes applies as a transaction if we don't wrap it with explicit transaction if core default isolation level is a level it, it's not a correct say, to say that if core default isolation level is read uh uh committed uncommitted or something like that oh, actually i used typo here read uncommitted <laughs> yeah uh, uh, 
it's not a correct to say that this is a default value for EF core. This is default value for DB provider. And if no one over, uh, if it is not overridden for DB provider, then it means this isolation level will be used for EF core as well. Uh, entity state is used to track entities changes in memory before save changes. That is what we saw from EF core logs, how that works. Uh, even though EF core uses auto commit transaction mode, uh, this is what I just showed you here. Like we set it this guy, which means we in auto commit mode uh, uh, by default. EF core overrides that behavior because each save changes act as a transaction. And by starting the transaction, uh, we override auto commit transaction mode. Uh, that's it from my side. Several links will be shared here. Uh, GitHub repo with that code examples, some article article on medium where I described ex actually everything I just uh, discussed on this meeting is in this uh, article and some useful link regarding EF core uh, modify entity state behavior, how it works. And um, that's it. Any other questions from your side?